They've got service tonight from 11 to 1, right? They remember that. It's the first and the last of Fridays of every month. Thank you. Thanking God for ending it and thanking God for starting the new one. Pastor Josh Hector and family, good morning. Pastor Joseph Charles, what's up? Nice. This is Women's Month, right? So the ladies are in charge. Good morning to you wherever you are, whatever you're doing. The folks on the Sister Isles of Kariaku and P.D. Martinique, good morning. Thank you. Yeah. All those of us who were thankful for the rain yesterday. It wasn't enough. Some folks saying it wasn't enough. But nonetheless, you know, it's a little is better than nothing. Although Pastor Fletcher has said, you know, half a loaf is no bread. <laughs> Good morning, Pastor Bishop George Fletcher and family. How are you doing? Nixon, what's up, Papi? Had to visit all you one of these Sundays, you know. Yeah, got to come up and spend. That's the home church, you know. Yeah, yeah. Westall is the adoptive church. You know, I got adopted there, but... You know. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning to each and every one of you. Pastor Crow, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah. How do you do? Good morning to the folks inside of Felix Park. How do you do this morning? Nice. Cherry Hill, good morning to you. I want to say good morning to my good friend boy, Junior Murray. What's up, papi? Junior Murray fit as a fiddle, you know? Junior, how much years you have now? 20? <laughs> oh my goodness, you got to give me that formula, yeah? Good morning, Smashy. Coach at St. David's Catholic Secondary School. Good. As a matter of fact, good morning to the management, principal, staff of that school. Lewis and Buck, good morning. Jig, you think it easy to take it easy? <laughs> good morning to the Taylor family out there in Corinth. How do you do? Ah, uh, so good. Stop still the goats, right? Nice. Mary E. Bank says, good morning. Arthur Langa and good Friday morning, my brother from me in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. What's the weather like up there, Arthur? When last you spoke with Judy? Good morning, good morning. I want to say good morning to um, two wonderful folks. She was my mother, one of my mothers at primary school, Miss Lucille Swan and Mr. Prescott Swan out there in Plains in St. Patrick. Good morning. How do you do? Nice. Folks, it's 25 minutes on to 7 o'clock. Let's get with the program or else I'll get stuck right here. It's time for the word of the day, and it is a verb. It is a doing word, an action word. That word today is demarcate. Demarcate. It is spelled D-E-M-A-R-C-A-T-E. -E. Now, to demarcate something is to fix or define its limits or edges. Yeah, setting the boundaries, the parameters. Nice. Now, here's how we can use that word in a sentence, yeah? Treaty negotiations are underway, and both parties have agreed to accept whatever boundaries are demarcated in the document. Learn to spell it, learn to pronounce it, learn to use it in your writing and in your speech. Felicia Maxwin out there in how we call up there boy. All oh, there's hope. Yeah, my sister, you know. Sis, how we go do? Mommy looks like she's going. Yeah, but nonetheless, hold strong. Felicia Chiron. Yeah. Good, nice. The children too. Good morning to all of them. 
All right, the thought of the day, Nelisa Nadisha, rather. Good morning to you and the rest of the folks in Cafe and surrounding areas, Nakita and Ryan and the Sanderson family. Well, I understand Kitty Cat left us, you know, um, but her brother Alvin is here with us. Good morning, Alvin. How are you doing? Nice. The thought of the day today, there are no secrets to success. Absolutely none. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. I have failed so many times. But I eventually will be a success, yeah? To the disappointment of my enemies. <laughs> There are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. Good morning to Fen Fen and family out there in the Mohai. Everybody up there, good morning. Good morning. Gail, good morning. How are you doing? Yeah, all you good? Nice. 23 minutes on to the hour of 7 o'clock hunting season, right? It's open from the 1st of October to the 31st of December. You can now hunt legally Maniku, Tatu, Iguana, Rami, and the monkey. Uh -huh. Now, who eats Maniku? Yuck. It smells so bad when it's alive. How will it smell when it's dead? <laughs> Oh my goodness. But nonetheless, folks, um, despite the fact that the hunting season is open, also remind yourself, uh, if you're hunting, game hunting, whatever, or you're hunting for a living, whatever, you have to observe, recognize, and appreciate. You need to seek permission from landowners, property owners, before you just barge in and, you know, do what you want to do. Because most of the times you are tempted, if you hold a meat, you might just get some provision with it. You know what I'm saying? And there you'll be indulging in pretty larceny. Good morning to the pretty larceny task force of the RGPF. Yeah, good morning. Corporal Bellot, good morning. How are you doing, puppy? Nice, nice. Good, good, good. Okay, well, our Prime Minister should be back in Grenada today. He went off to Qatar to sign this Memorandum of Understanding on air service. All right? So, in his absence, we know that uh, the Minister for Mobilization, Implementation, and Transformation, the Honorable, my friend, Andy Williams, and I had to put that in front, is my friend, long, long time. Yeah, when I really got to know he was the guy behind the hotspot and I met him, he said, but Innocent, you know me as a little boy. The first time you come to rehearse Calypso with my, when my father plays, I, I was playing the drums. Good morning, Andy, and your entire home circle. Yeah. Good morning, Danny and family. DJ Killer Songs. Yeah, wifey, good morning. Nice. Keep a smile on your face, okay? Okay, well, we heard of the accidents that occurred uh, over the past two days, Wednesday and Thursday. Um, yeah, we had one at uh, the Grandin's Main Road, uh, just uh, in front of Panel Cafosta. And then we heard of this other sad one yesterday up at La Portree. I'm going to get some more information on that because I need to know who, you know, who are the persons involved. La Portree is like home to me. Yeah, that's where I got my, you know, my early schooling, Tivoli RC. Yeah, good morning to the principal and staff and the students of the Tivoli RC school. Only your best is good enough. Good morning, Cheryl, right next door, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Good, right. Okay, so we heard that um, the Credit Union, the Caribbean Confederation of Credit Union, they're seeking international help to chart the way forward for the enhancement and development of credit unions in the Caribbean. Now, this comes against the backdrop of an announcement of over two billion U.S. dollars in assets owned by credit unions in the OECS. That's a lot of money. But having the money is one thing. What you do with it is the other, yeah? How you're treating your members. 
the facilities that are available, the instruments that are available to members, that's important. And as a matter of fact, next week, uh, next Thursday, if the good Lord spare our lives, we'll be having Gaffin here with us again uh, to, you know, talk on credit unions. Um, yeah, we had them yesterday. They talked about insurance, how they, you know, they overlook and oversee the insurance sector of Grenada. We had a lot of information there. Good morning to you, Mr. Martin and Mr. What was his name again? Fletcher. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning to Garfield. How are you? Mr. Felix, good morning to you, sir. And finally, buzzing this morning, well, no, not finally, the penultimate, we heard uh, opposition leader Dr. Keith Mitchell urging the government of Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell to reconsider the criteria for assessing or accessing the Chinese-built low-income houses, which were negotiated as a gift with a specific focus on assisting the poorest and most vulnerable people in the country, all right? This is a story that's, you know, picking up some story, you know. Um, I don't know. I need to get... I don't have much time to get into the depth of the news, the local news per se. Um, but I, I, I'd like to know some more about this. What, what criteria are being used for giving out the houses or selling the houses or whatever what 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 conclusion was reached and that all right now october 31st is a new date set for uh, the launch of activities to celebrate grenada's 50th anniversary of independence and um yeah i think the talk from the general public created that because some folks had some reservations as it relates to mixing the two events, the October 19th and the independence celebrations, you know. I was talking to my good friend yesterday from Maki. Oh, you do, Papi. Could you imagine this? We, we're friends for so long and I can't remember your name off my head, but nonetheless, you know who I'm talking about. Give your wife my regards and make make sure you're Friday conky this morning. <laughs> oh, gosh, I swell you out. Oh, my goodness. But nonetheless, Valerie Christopher, good morning to you, my dear friend and family. Love to hear your voice. Yes, thank God for life. Love to the Joseph and Christopher families listening and watching from the UK. God bless you. God bless you too, Valerie. Valerie, are you coming for Christmas? I mean, we're waiting on you. Uncle Glide and waiting here. Yes, and good morning, Carlos and Cassie and Curti and the families, right? Curti, I family, Carlos as a family. Cassie playing smart, but nonetheless. Yulin Alexander says, Good morning, Gordon. Good morning, Grenada. Karako Pidi Martinik. Blessings to all on this fantastic Friday. Have a great day and a wonderful and safe weekend, everyone from New York. Yulin the Swan, good morning to you and the listening public. Please. Say good morning to Upper St. John in St. Andrew. Upper St. John in St. Andrew, good morning. Yolan Swan, that's, is this Bevin's wife? Um, I'm going back in my repertoire there. Yeah, good morning to you and all the folks up there. Um, Carl Abraham and all the guys up there. Good morning. Good morning to Baker and all the folks who usually frequented Baker's shop in the early days when we hang out there. Good morning to Upper St. John, right? Good morning to Blaise and where we call Congo Tongue. Good morning up there as well. Carrier, good morning. Kultia man, I hope you're doing fine, right? Sylvina Charles, bless morning, innocent. And everyone, thanks and same to you. All right, let me see what's happening before we run off to do the news. Let me see what's happening on the WhatsApp platform. All right, hello, guilty. Good morning to Grenada. Okay, nice. Thought of the day. When you focus on problems, you will have more problems. When you focus on possibilities, you will have more opportunities. MB Sweden. Good morning, sir. I've seen, I seen your face, you know, but I can't really figure who is this guy that, you know, Guilty. Oh, this man. <laughs> All right. Um, someone says on WhatsApp, no notification is sending on Facebook and YouTube since yesterday and today. Check your team members if they're doing their job properly or your audio. All right. So the technical team, they are complaining that we have some issues with our Facebook and uh, YouTube platforms in terms of sending out messages, notifications. All right. Good. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, 
Okay, someone is asking this question. No, that was from yesterday, so that's not for me to deal with. All right, good. Um, what we'll do now is that we'll break off to do the AM edition of News, Sports, and the Weather here in Classic. Uh, we've got guests this morning. There would be minimal, if any at all, time for us to have a, a conversation because we have uh, two separate guests. Uh, we've got a mathematics uh, workshop that is coming on for primary and secondary school teachers. And uh, we also have some to talk on some football. So we, I doubt we'll have much time for a conversation session this morning but nonetheless we can participate by listening you know um, maybe I'll open the line to ask a question or two uh, within the conversations but we've got to do the break all right uh, those of you on the television platform we've got a rebroadcast of last evening's television news and those of you here with me on classic we've got the AM edition of news sports and the weather for joining us. The Royal Grenada Police Force has confirmed the deaths of two infants, ages one year and 11 months, and a two-year-old. The first accident occurred sometime after 8 a.m. on Wednesday along the Grand Anne's public road in St. George, involving two vehicles, one driven by a female accompanied by two occupants, including the deceased infant and another vehicle driven by a male. The occupants of both vehicles were taken to the general hospital to seek medical attention. The infant was subsequently pronounced dead by a medical doctor. The other accident occurred sometime after 7 a.m. on Thursday along the La Poitry Public Road, St. Andrew, involving a two-year-old child and a motor vehicle. The child was taken to the Princess Alice Hospital to seek medical attention there, and later pronounced dead by a medical doctor. This story to report, community health, mental health workers in Grenada are continuing to protest for proper remuneration, tools, and genuine engagement from the authorities. More details in this report. For the last two days, community health workers gathered in front of the Mongay Mental Hospital with the support of their union representatives in protest action. The protest action coincides with Mental Health Awareness Week observed worldwide from October 1st to the 7th. The mental health workers began mild industrial action on September 25th wearing union t-shirts to protest what they claim to be scant courtesy given by the authorities in the Ministry of Health in response to their grievances. These issues include improper compensation as they are not paid a traveling allowance despite doing over 700 miles of travel per month in their respective areas, lack of tools to fulfill their job requirements, unpaid claims, and understaffing. Public Relations Officer of the Public Workers Union, Daisy Hazard, said that they will not back down until something is done. Men and women here cannot be asked to continue to bear the burden of a society society on their backs. Once the union and once members and workers begin a course of industrial action, there is no backing off, there is no stepping away, there is no stepping down until and unless persons receive at least some of what they are looking for or all, if not all of what they are looking for. 
So once we've started and we have started, we started last week, we're going until it's until it's over, until it's done. Until we can come back to the public and say that some of what these persons need or all of it, at least just to be able to conduct their jobs day to day for the community, for the people of Grenada, um, we, we're, not, we're not stepping back from that. Hazard claims that the Ministry of Health are yet to address the workers' issues, but have sought an end to the industrial action. We received word from the PS uh, uh, General Hospital, who's under, under which authority these nurses fall, asking us to give them some more time. Well, how much more time? 20 years has not been enough. 26 years has not been enough. One year has not been enough. So how much more time? So no, we're not able to do that. They've asked that we call off the industrial action. And this industrial action started with simply a photograph of, of these persons in, in union t-shirts. So we've not, as today is the highest point of escalation that we have come to. And we're being asked with no further guarantees to ask these persons to call off the industrial action. That's unconscionable, you know. But you know, there are ad administrators who are saying to these people incredulously, why is that again? Where that come out? I don't know nothing about that. I don't know nothing about all you're not having phones. I don't know nothing about you are requiring or needing the use of, of government of, for government to provide you with a phone. Um, we don't know anything about you not receiving uh, a proper uh, 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 proper compensation for your bus fares. Well, if those persons are sitting in those capacities and in those offices and those chairs and they do not know, they should demit. Acting Prime Minister and Minister for Mobilization Andy Williams, who was at the mental hospital during the protest, said he was just doing a cordial visit to the facility when he noticed the industrial action by workers. Other uh, staff who lost a child yesterday, so I visited the hospital yesterday. I decided this morning to make a pass here. After here, I'm going to buy, buy Melville Street down there. Just, just a general pass. When I came here, I happened to see this year, um, this morning, and I spoke to the union representative. Um, and we had a chat on it, and I just engaged the workers. And, you know, and that's it. For GBN News, I am Rena Pet Thomas reporting. St. David's Catholic Secondary School is on temporary lockdown due to pest infestation there. More in this report. Parents of students attending the St. Davis Catholic Secondary School were informed of the temporary closure via a letter on Wednesday. The letter reads in part, and I quote, please be informed that there will be no school on Thursday 5th and Friday 6th October, as the school will be undergoing urgent pest control procedures. The physical environment, therefore, will not be safe for students and teachers alike to gather. It is anticipated that normal teaching and learning will reconvene at the school on Monday, 9th October. However, a final determination will be made by the weekend and communicated to parents." Unquote. The latest issue appeared to substantiate recent claims made by President of the Grenada Union of Teachers, Jude Bartholomew. Bartholomew claimed that for over four decades, the school's structure has been in a deplorable state and nothing has been done to ensure safety and a conducive learning and working environment for students and staff. Visited St. David's Catholic Secondary School together with St. David's Branch. And I must say, it is very painful. It is sad. It wants to make you cry. St. David's Catholic Secondary School, the condition in which this school is in, the state, almost 30 something going to 40 years ago, and the same old desk, the same break up screen, the, 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 the same tables, the crack up walls, the dilapidated toilet facilities, and everything like that, the darkness with very little light. St. David's Catholic Secondary School, that is what is happening. Our news desk reached out to the ministries of education and health to garner a feedback on what measures are being taken to correct the situation. However, up to news time, a feedback was not received. Christina John, GBN News. A vehicular accident at La Poultry St. Andrew on Thursday morning left one family mourning the death of their two-year-old son. The toddler, who celebrated his second birthday on Saturday, was struck down by a well-known passenger bus and rushed to the Princess Alice Hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. Nisha Paul visited the family 
today. Two-year-old Azavian Andrew was struck down just outside his home in the northeastern community of La Potri, St. Andrew. The incident, which occurred around 7 a.m. on Thursday, involved a red Toyota Hyas passenger bus. You have a cousin living with him here that goes to school, and the bus normally comes down to get children to go to school. And as I have children here, I was in the kitchen attending to stuff, so I asked his father to check to make sure that he in the yard. He did check, and he said, you know, he, he saw them, you know, at the back. He had a run some day, so they normally play with it. But while the cousin was going, I guess as much the little one running behind, you know, behind him. That was Donna Andrew, the grieving mother of the toddler, whose life was cut short five days after he celebrated his second birthday. I heard the boss leave off, and then I see somebody call out to my husband because he came back inside. And when I look out, I see everybody coming out of the bus. I was just crying. The child was standing somewhere around there. He pick up the child and he drag him to go somewhere on the ground. So the child was standing in the bus. The bus actually drag, drag him and go. Andrew, who is affectionately known as Chantel in the community, says she is trying to come to terms with the devastating ordeal. He's a very jovial little boy. Everybody in the village, he will smile, he will laugh, he will chat, he will fall, he will get up, and he will be like nothing. He didn't fall, he didn't knock himself, and he will continue going on. When he comes from school, the first thing he will come and look for his juice. I love to eat. <laughs> well, as every mother, you know, it will be a devastating situation for them. So, go through that process right now. It's just a processing stage for me right now to process and accept. I have a young three month old baby. I'm just trying to put myself together because it's a very difficult situation. Andrew's cousin, Marlon Richards, has noted concerns raised and shared by other members of the community with regard to the reckless conduct of some bus drivers. You hear everybody in the village saying that is the boy driving every morning. Persons would have tell him about it, but I guess you know, he do not he have to do all his studying. He, he come in and call the passengers to drop them to school. So that's the sentiment you get in every morning that the, the young man does not drive slow. You don't have a license on top of that, and you're not driving slow. So, I mean, it's, it's really unfortunate that the, the, the child, if you look at the, the, the map, the child was on the side of the road. He had sense to know. He saw the vehicle turning, and he packed up on the side and waited. So the bus took him on the side of the road. Police investigations are ongoing into the unfortunate incident. For GBN News, I'm Nisha Paul. Other news, women in Grenada will benefit from a social protection project funded by Global Affairs Canada, which seeks to boost women's economic resilience by tackling the barriers that worsen their vulnerabilities to achieving economic empowerment. Co-led by UN Women and the United Nations Population Fund, in partnership with the government of Grenada, the Build Back Equal project was launched at the Grenada Room of Radisson Grenada Beach Resort on Thursday. It's the report. Build Black Equal Project is a four-year project that is being piloted in Grenada, Dominica, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines to achieve national and regional goals on gender equality. The core objective of the project is ensuring that women and youth-owned businesses have access to affordable and adequate financing, fit-for-purpose social protection programs that ensure no one is left behind, sexual and reproductive health services that are more 
more effective and that survivors of gender-based violence can have easier access to the service they need. The government of Canada, in partnership with the UN Women and the United Nations Populations Fund, is funding the project. DJ Gibbons, UNFPA liaison officer for Barbados and the OECS, spoke of her organization's support for the project. And for UNFP in particular, our support will range from policy and technical support to civil society-led empowerment activities with special attention to those who are vulnerable and those who are left behind, people with disabilities and survivors of gender-based violence. And quite a bit of this work has started already, which we'll hear a bit later in a deeper discussion today. And we know that we need to continue prioritizing the needs of the women and adolescent girls and the survivors of sexual violence. We also want to make a big plug for building on existing initiatives and programs. And the project is part of Canada's Feminist International Assistance Policy. High Commissioner of Canada to Barbados and the OECS, First Secretary for Development, David Simard, thanked the government of the four Windward Islands for their support for the initiative and their role as key contributors to its design, which builds on the country's gender equality efforts over the years. All countries need to make sure that women are empowered to reach their full potential so they can earn their own livelihoods, which will benefit their families as well as the economic growth of their communities and countries. We support the World Bank Equal because we believe it has designed a holistic approach it will help increase women and vulnerable persons and groups' ability to participate in every sphere of modern day society, in the formal economy, in education, for sexual and reproductive health, and even in public life. Minister for Social Development Gloria Thomas said the project targets community organizations, institutions, human service providers, policymakers, and other key stakeholders. Locally, the Tri-Island State of Grenada, Karakou, and Titi Matnik stands to benefit significantly from this project, which seeks to heavily engage and provide avenues for increased development and empowerment of our women and girls. It will also create opportunities for greater collaboration amongst community organizations, institutions, human service providers, policy makers, and other key stakeholder groupings in terms of designing and delivering of service that are specifically geared towards women, development, and empowerment. For GBN News, I am Rena Pet Thomas reporting. Story to report a devastating fire in Demon St. David has left one man counting his losses. Well, yesterday I was trying to um, do a construction on the house to a stronger construction. And then I go by um, my hand, I get all my materials and things. Look at all the steels and the money on the seat. So we decided to cast Saturday. So I left and I go up to the truck to go for the bamboo. And while we were out in the class out there, my partner said to me, Ting, look at your house, catch a fire down there, no fire. So I said, I said, but you like why? Uh, when I watch down the I said, fire, fire, fire. Fire victim Stephen David Peters speaking with reporters amidst the debris of the four-bedroom wooden structure he once called his home as he waited for police officers to visit the scene to conduct their investigations. The homeowner lost all his possessions in the fire which engulfed his home just after 7 p.m. on Wednesday. He said firefighters from Central Police Station in St. George's arrived on the scene just 
just after 8 p.m. Efforts to contain the fire saw additional support coming from a fire truck dispatched from the Grenville Police Station around 8.30 p.m. The fire victim, who is a retired maintenance worker from Nawasa, said he has been receiving assistance from a friend in the community since the unfortunate incident. He was approached by representatives from the Ministry of Housing on Thursday morning, who promised to provide him with the help he so desperately needs. They talk to me already. As I come in long day now, and next one, and next one approach me there. They take long me number and everything, and they say they will get back to me. Be thankful. Peters, who is originally from Marlmount, St. David, resettled to the nearby village of Diamond, where he has lived for the last 24 years. For GBN News, I'm Nisha Paul. Now, the West Indies School of Hospitality has launched its first pro-chef mentor training program, a partnership with the Culinary Institute of America. Five local chefs are benefiting from the first pro-chef mentor training program organized by the West Indies School of Hospitality, which, in collaboration with the Culinary Institute of America, CIA. Chef David Carmen, Director of Client Engagement for the Culinary Institute of America, and Chef Phil Cripso, an instructor in the Food Enthusiast Department and Chef for CIA Consulting, facilitated the food training program. It entailed demonstrations, discussions, and training sessions for five local chefs from Monk Cinnamon, Royalton Grenada, and Silver Sands Grenada. A mentorship program uh, really starting the ball rolling with teaching people how to teach, and that's the first step in any good uh, mentoring program, and, and that's exactly what it is. It's a program not just of training and, and not just of teaching, but it's a program of mentoring, a program where there's going to be a little bit of nurturing, a little bit of development involved to really help guide people, not just to learn their job skills, but to learn a career and, and even a profession. That was Chef David Kamen. Wish's mission is to create a learning path for Caribbean people in the hospitality and service industries, enabling them to become more empowered, confident, create an efficient workforce, and by extension, a more comprehensive Caribbean destination. A partnership was signed between WISH and CIA in February 2023 to complement an existing partnership with Econel University. This new culinary program has a tiered approach that will provide a mentor training to the culinary leadership of WISH, who will then cascade the training through to their respective teams across Grenada. The local chefs had this to share about the mentorship opportunity. Last week, the training has helped me develop knowledge uh, about how to go about training staff in different specific areas. With this training, I develop more confidence in the way that I will talk to my staff, train my staff, and also help me give proper feedback to them. Going forward, we, we put, for, put together an action plan yesterday. Um, on, on exactly how we would execute certain projects um, when it comes to improving chef's um, level of confidence in the kitchen when it comes to doing the jobs. Using the CIA Pro Chef Digital Video Series as a training platform, CIA approved mentors will guide their apprentices through the digital video series towards a goal of achieving Pro Chef Level 1 certification. The mentors themselves will continue to work towards was their own pro level two certification while actively engaging with their apprentices. Wishes co-founder and owner of Monk Cinnamon, Barry Colomo, said their aim is to offer opportunities for Grenadians to build their skills. Education is important for everyone, but when you are able to uh, provide education and training to persons who may not who may not normally be able to access it, uh, it even uh, means more. It means a lot to us and uh, we're happy to have um, the Culinary Institute of America, uh, Chef Cayman and, and um, Chef Crispo here with us. 
Chris Lena John, GBN News. All right, so with the preliminary round of the 2023 Green Lake debates concluded, preparation is underway for the second round of 16 of the competition. Open to students from every secondary school in Grenada and Karakou, the Green Lake debates provide a setting for public discussion of ideas that can help to build students' confidence, teamwork, research, and organizational skills, in addition to broadening their knowledge. It's more in this report. The preliminary round of the 2023 Grand Lake debates kicked off with the St. David's Catholic Secondary and the Grenada SDA Comprehensive traveling to Karakou to face Hillsborough Secondary and Bishop's College. It then moved to the Kirani James Athletic Stadium and then on to the Deluxe Cinema in Grenville as the schools worked to secure places in round two. This impromptu format of the debate means the team randomly select their topic on the day of their march. Teams are then given 30 minutes to prepare their presentation without assistance from their teachers. It provides an avenue for students to showcase their general knowledge, research, critical thinking, and public speaking skills. Organizers and coaches are commending students for accepting the impromptu challenge. Students shine. It's not often that they are given the opportunity to speak on the spur of the moment publicly. So I believe that this really is an opportunity for developing the future speakers, the future politicians. Seeing how the students handle themselves. They supported each other. The students listened and they rebutted well. They are executing it to the best of their ability. The teams did an excellent job there. I am proud of my girls. I enjoyed the way both teams presented their topics. I appreciated the fact that we um, can reevaluate and come back stronger. The fact that the students had the courage to showcase what they understood about the, the mood of the topic. The enthusiasm of my students. Their confidence and their delivery and how articulate they are. I like the fact that the students are able to incorporate more of their views on the topic. Totally impressed. We just got to see them and their creativity shining out. Interaction with the team and gathering the information. The opportunity to speak in front of a, a live audience, I think, would augur well for their development in the future. The next round of the debates will be on October 12th and 13th. The broadcast of the 2023 debate begins with highlights of the preliminaries on October 8th on GBN's TV from 4 p.m. They will also be available for viewing on Greenlake's YouTube channel. For GBN News, I am Rena Pet Thomas reporting. The month of October recognizes children and no better space to be in than GB and I saw. Stay with us. A good eye captures all. GB and I saw is brought to you by Claire Vision. Child Month is celebrated from the 1st to the 31st of October every year. This year, the theme is Every Child Matters, See Me, Value Me. In recognition of Child Month, GBN's I Saw features a few snippets from official messages delivered to mark Child Month. During this month of October, let us lend support to all children, recognize their talents, focus on showing each child that he or she is of great value to our society, and do our best to instill sound values in our children. The Special Education Unit, it is our hope that we all see ourselves as agents of change, that we embrace each opportunity to promote, support, and encourage all children, because every child matters and deserves to be seen and valued. However, seeing and valuing children is not enough. We must also act. We must advocate for policies and initiatives that prioritize the well-being of children, that protect their rights, and that provide them with the tools they need to reach their full potential. We must support organizations and individuals dedicated to improving the lives of children, for they are the true champions of our shared vision. We must 
us listen to our children, their dreams, their concerns, and ensure that they have a voice in decisions that affect them. We must teach them to value diversity, the importance of kindness, and the power of inclusion. The established color for Child Month is burnt orange. However, in recognition of Grenada's 50th anniversary of independence, the national colors will be featured for this year's celebration. Therefore, the t-shirts will be red with green and gold text. Share with us your photo and video submissions of your activities to mark Child Month via WhatsApp at 405-3052 or our other social media platforms. Welcome, viewers and listeners, uh, to the conversation. It's 16 minutes gone past the hour of 7 o'clock. And as I told you earlier, we've got guests this morning. And note the S at the end of the T, because two different set of guests. All right. Um, my first guest this morning is my colleague, Kenroy. I'm a touch man. Good morning. Yes. Kenroy Batiste, uh, no stranger. He is this time coming in the capacity as the director of media sponsorship and public relations for the Kellen Batiste Foundation Inc. Yes. Kenway, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Innocent uh, God and Joseph. Good morning, uh, listeners of K105, also viewers of GBN altogether. Yeah, how are you doing? Good, very well. Today's a beautiful day. You know? It is obviously a very, very beautiful day. Um, yes. I thought, I, I, I was longing for some rain throughout the day because, you know, we were lacking rain, but when I looked at how it was this morning, I said, no, that's, that's I'm, I'm going to go out of the, the, the language. That's beautiful. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> How that sound? <laughs> I give you a pass. I give you a pass because, you know, you know I, I like people to express, you know, their meanness and yeah, yeah. being the element uh, of course, when yeah, they need a most rises. beautiful. Yes. Yes. Now, um, the Cullen Baptist Memorial football match that's coming up. Now, give us a backdrop. Tell us about the Cullen Baptist Memorial. Right. So, the Cullen Baptist Memorial football match uh, this year will be the fifth annual Kellan Batiste Memorial Football Match. It will be happening on Saturday, tomorrow, October 7, from 4 p.m. at uh, the Montrouge Playing Field. Okay? Literally, um, in, in previous times, uh, the event was staged at the Roy St. John Playing Field and the National Stadium. Right? But we are moving it this year to Montrouge Playing Field. The intention is to really take it across Grenada. So, you will see that in years to come. Okay? Okay. So it's going to be an amazing encounter. You're talking uh, Kellon Batiste Select 11 versus Real Old Men Football Club. Well, That's going to be the matchup. Uh, I'm not sure in term. I don't think he is, but I. But but what I know for sure is he is going to be there. Yeah. Okay. That, that's that's. Uh, yes. Um, Bob, I did something. When I was maybe about 13 or 14 years, mm -hmm. and that stuck with me. I remember coming down to a football match from Grenville to um, Queen's Park, mm -hmm. and he stayed in the middle and flicked a ball behind his foot okay. with a back flick and scored. And that stays with me. And that would never go. That's the best yes. football move I've ever seen. Yes. yes. You know, and I'm saying, where are these guys in them? Are, they, are we going to get some more of these guys? Mm. And even at this age, he's so committed to this thing. Yes. Ever so often, you know, you're, you're driving around and you'll see him in one of the parks just playing away, dancing with the ball on his head and everything like that. Yes. Morning, bye-bye. Yes. Yeah. I can tell you for sure he, he will be at the event. Right. Yes, that's yeah. for sure. He has been invited. 
invited um, to this very special event, right? Because the thing is, but real old men, you know, they will be bringing their 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 team, their squad, right? yes. correct. All right. So you know, various members over the years, and you know, real old men is, is a very structured team, one of the very structured football teams at Grenada, and of course, um, we've seen it fit to invite them as part of the mix. But not just real old men, like I mentioned, Columbus Select Eleven, a number of uh, former national players will be part of the mix, literally. On yeah. the Kellen Batty Select? Yes, okay. yes. Nigel Bishop, oh. for example, uh, talking Ron Bo Peep, uh -huh. yeah, uh, Joseph. A number of players um, have uh, given uh, um, their, their consent uh, to be um, on the Kellen Batty Select 11. Before we go too, too far in this, right, for young football enthusiasts coming up, mm -hmm. all right, that might not know, they're hearing about this big event happening tomorrow yes. and the Kellen Batiste Memorial and everything like that. Who was Kellen Batiste really? Right, so Kellen, uh, my brother, f the very first yeah, of siblings, uh, he passed away in 2012, former national goalkeeper of Grenada. He was long. Uh, yes. He had some, some mechanism that, you know, extended his arms when he had to save in the V, man. I mean, Kellen was just known for his athleticism, literally. And um, many people remember him for his athleticism. He was also very known for being able to read the game. Yeah? yeah, Kellan was amazing. So Kellan, in, in, in fact, uh, w like I mentioned, former national goalkeeper of Grenada, he actually made his uh, debut uh, in, in, in football, international debut, uh, in 1991. And in fact, uh, appeared in eight FIFA World Cup qualifying matches. Okay, of course, one of which was the amazing 2004 yeah. uh, game between Grenada and the USA, right here at the National Stadium in Grenada. Of course, the score line was 3-2. Yeah, okay. very close, yeah. Yeah, in favor of the USA, yeah. of course. Yeah. But um, Kellan was known for saving a lot of, you know, like prevented, he prevented quite literally and people have concluded that as well. They've seen his exploits on the field from pre uh, preventing a lot of goals from being scored. One of the example. things I admired about Kellan was that, as you rightfully said, he read the game. Mm -hmm. So he was able to direct even from the goal. He, you know, he was always up on the on the, on the the mark. Yes. And direct Directing, directing, sometimes even doing some of the work that the coach should be doing. Absolutely. Yeah. That was the passion. And, and that's the thing. Keller was so immensely passionate about football. But even after he retired, he continued. He was the goalkeeper and coach, for example, of the national senior men's team. And, of course, he was associated with the GBSS football team. He was the coach there specifically. And uh, he was just all about building people for the sport, training people, um, aspiring goalkeepers, and helping them to pursue excellence in that regard. Absolutely amazing human being, you know, at, at the level of, you know, an individual, at the level of a professional, Kellon was amazing with a capital A. Kellon Betis Foundation Inc. Mm -hmm. Right? What does that entity really uh, purport to do? Yes. So the Kellon Batiste Foundation Inc., uh, who is of course chairman is Kyron Batiste. Kyron is my he's my third brother. So you have in all cases, you know. Kellon, Kelvin, Kyron, Ken, Kathy, Keith, and Kathy, Keith, and Kenroy. So Kyron is my third brother. How many in all? How many siblings? Seven. Okay, wow. Well, yes. okay. That's yes. a good number. <laughs> yes. That's a good number. Morning, Mom. <laughs> Thanks so very much. Yeah. So, Karen is the chairman of the Kellon Batiste Foundation, Inc. And uh, the foundation is all about identifying, developing, and encouraging young aspiring athletes in Grenada to reach their highest potential through scholarships, through training, and other opportunities. Yeah? And um, we have been pushing a lot of work. For example, Enel St. Bernard, who is now on a basketball scholarship in the U.S. Again, the foundation has been very instrumental in, in, in ensuring that that happens for him. Enel is a genius basketball player, yeah. right? And we invite uh, Grenada to keep your eyes open, your ears open, to learn so much more right. about his exploits in the okay. years ahead. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, five years, what, what ha has uh, the Foundation Inc. accomplished thus far? I mean, you talk about the, mm -hmm. you know, being associated with that basketball person. Yes. But um, is your 
impact being felt around the f uh, footballing fraternity? Have you all taken on initiatives and you know getting young players into into Kellan's footstep? Well, absolutely. We all about providing support, uh, engaging uh, our young people because it's it's all about scouting for talent. Uh, my brother Karen is based in the U.S., but he's here very regularly. Um, he has his network of people, um, not just in the U.S., but in 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 North America and Europe altogether. Okay. And he is um, bringing them into the mix relative to our local talent. So we've been providing uh, support, scholarship opportunities, um, individuals needing gear, just support to help individuals to blossom in the sport uh, they uh, so desire to pursue. Okay. And going forward, um, are there any uh, primary goals? Uh, is, is there a, a target? Uh, uh, um, you know, at the end of five years, this is what we want to accomplish for the Foundation Inc. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a, a work in progress. What I can tell you is uh, we are working to bring to reality a National Goalkeeping Academy because when Kellon was mm. alive, this was one of Kellon's dreams. And so we are going to uh, ensure that this actually happens. It started somewhat previously, but we're going to give it some new energy as we move forward, and it's going to happen. Let so me ask this. Kellon was so astute in football. Do you play soccer, Ken Ray? So when I was younger, I used to play football, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> at the moment, <laughs> at the moment, I'm a viewer okay. and a supporter. Okay. So anything football, I am going to support. I'll be there. You know, literally, you have my support, right? Do you play any sport at all? I actually like to swim. Okay. Yeah, swimming is one of my um, hobbies. I like to swim, right? Um, apart from swimming, um, I play a little bit of lawn tennis. Not too good at it, but I'm getting there. But I'm um, swimming more. But I come from a family of, 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 of footballers and basketball players, quite literally. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Um, so coming back to tomorrow's event, it's happening at the Manurush Playing Field. Is there a is there a charge for it? No, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're asking this question because this event is absolutely free. You come and you enter, literally, right? Mon Rouge playing field from 4 o'clock on, on Saturday afternoon. Free admission. It's going to be so good. Mix and mingle, enjoy this uh, exciting matchup between Kellon Batiste Select 11 and Real Men Football Club. You can't afford to miss this. You know, Innos, I'm, uh, listen, Innocent, I'm coming for you. You know, Gordon, <laughs> Joseph, I am coming for I, you wherever you are. I will be there. I, I will be there. Um, you're talking and I'm starting uh -huh. rescheduling activities in my head, what I can move from where to where so that I can be there tomorrow at 4. Okay, we've got a date. I'll be there tomorrow. Okay. Definitely. Good. And we will accommodate you because we have we'll be having a number of uh, um, special guests at okay. the event yeah, okay uh, Kirani James is going to be there yeah Kirani good morning the Jaguar yes yes <laughs> could Felix as well going yes. to be there and of course other specially invited guests will okay. be there um, usually when we have this sort of um, celebratory matches mm. they're usually some sort of uh, social activities afterwards mm. it's, yeah mm. it's gonna have music and mm. yeah so absolutely I'll, I'll get to see you dance yeah, you'll see me shake a little leg. Yeah. yeah. Because you know I like to enjoy myself. Of, of you course. Know, you know, some people see me on the news and they think I'm only one kind of person. And you're just toy kind of Yeah, like that. Uh, joke you're making. I am a kaleidoscope of colors, you know. My um, goodness. Um, um, innocent. My goodness yes. me. So yeah. feel free. Come along. Come along. Be there. It's going to be so good. And yes, it's going to be an, uh, an after-match cool-down activity. Okay. So come. And don't um, I'm bother with lights because the place will be lit. Yeah. Literally it's, with lights. It's literally lit up, yeah? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's going to be. So yeah. you, it's going to be a nice atmosphere to just enjoy yourself and so on in the mix. Folks, you heard it. It's on tomorrow uh, from 4 at the Man Rouge playing field, uh, the 5th annual Kellen Batiste Memorial Football Match. Uh, Kellen Batiste mm -hmm. Select 11 mm -hmm. up against... 
Right, real old men. Real old football men. Football club. Yeah. Come on, make it a date and um, let's show some love. You know, remembering Kellon. He is remembering us. I'm certain he's looking at, you know, all the preparations from on high and saying, um, tonight you'll get some more inspiration and say, Ken, you should do this, that. I mean, no joke, you know, yeah. for real. Yeah, for I'm real. You. Yeah. Kellon lived football. He breathed the sport. Yeah. Um, listen, when World Cup, like, you know, like used to happen, yeah. man, that guy used to be. Yeah, he don't, he don't sleep. What? Yeah, he can't sleep. Yeah. Yeah. It's special. Ken Roy, um, we'll see you tomorrow and all the best as usual. I'll give your mom and your siblings my regards as always. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. Nice to see you. Thanks, everybody. Have a beautiful day today. Yeah. Folks, uh, we'll be back after these messages. Don't you go anywhere. to be unforgettable. Bring home a piece of the tropical green forest with every emerald. Capture the sparkling light of flawless water in a diamond. Make the sunrise and sunsets last forever. With precious colored gemstones, the essence of happiness is in our most precious memories. So when it all comes to an end, bring home something that will last forever. Colombian Emeralds International. Bring home more than a memory. At the popular Footprint Bar behind sand, corn will be in all forms and fashion. From Asham to roast corn to boiled corn, pay me to county to corn soup, and much, much more. With loads of entertainment and games for everyone. So be there from 2 p.m. Because there will be loads of beach games, dominoes, maple dances, and string band music. Mark your calendar and make sure you're part of Confest 2023 on Sunday, October 29th at Footprint Bar, Lauriston, Kerikou. Our partners for this event are the Grenada Tourism Authority, the Antillian Group, Ministry of Kerikou and Pity Martinic Affairs, National Lottery Authority, Arisa Credit Union, Massa, Grenadine Airways Limited, and Classic Caribbean Lighted. Corn, corn, corn. Confest 2023, October 29th. I'll see you there. Introducing the NIS Dream Loan, where possibilities are boundless and your aspirations are our priority. No matter where life takes you, NIS Dream Loans are here to make your dreams a reality. From purchasing your first plot of land or dream property, to renovating spaces, building your home, and seamlessly switching mortgages, we cater to every step of your journey. And here's what sets us apart. We offer easy financing options with competitive interest rates, quick approval processes, and flexible repayment terms. So why wait? Apply now and let our dedicated NIS team guide you through this exciting journey. Visit nisgrenada.org forward slash dream loan or call 440-3309 to book an appointment. Terms and conditions apply. Your dream awaits.
Welcome back, viewers and listeners, to the conversation. It's 25 minutes on to 8 o'clock, and I've got with me in the studio two wonderful gentlemen. They are from the Methodist Church. Am I correct? Yes. Uh, we can say representing, yes. Yes, of course, yes. right. They're representing the Methodist Church. And as I told you, you heard it in the news. They're bringing in uh, this uh, gentleman. I was hoping he would have been here with me in the studio this morning. I really wanted him to explain to me the significance of me knowing Pythagoras theorem, you know, for my daily life, but he, he he opted not to be here. But nonetheless, they're here to talk about that collaborative effort with the Ministry of Education, uh, collaborating with the Methodist Church of Grenada as they present that uh, mathematics guru from Singapore, Singapore yes. uh, that is going to be here for a two-day workshop with secondary school teachers. So, good morning, gentlemen. Firstly, I'll start to my extreme right. Tell me your name. Um, my name is Keith Blackman, and uh, I am a mathematics teacher at Wesley College. Okay, all right. Keith Blackman, uh, you like math? Love it. Okay, all right. And my dear friend? Reverend Prescott. Yes. Yes. Reverend. <laughs> yeah, I, I said to him, I'm hearing you all the time on the radio through the program, but, um, you know, I don't always get to meet. Okay, so... Um, that's, I, in my opinion, that's a wonderful initiative by the Methodist Church. And how did that idea come about? Is the is, is gentleman is a gentleman a Methodist worshiper? Not as far as I know. Okay. First of all, let me um, thank you, um, Innocent, for um, having us. And let me take this opportunity also to um, greet our viewing and listening audience and to thank Jibian in particular and especially for providing this platform whereby we can interact with the Grenadian community um, on a whole. Um, the Methodist Church um, has always um, held in high regard its um, mission, its the social arm of its its work, um, and education is part of that. Um, in the past, much of the work in the school was done by deacons. Um, however from time to time because a deacon might not always be posted in a particular um, area to work. Um, so sometimes the work um, suffered a little bit. Um, however, in the past four years, um, about 19, 20, 19 or there about, the Methodist Church took a deliberate um, decision to um, give renewed impetus to its work within all the schools that are under its care. Um, and part of that mission, they would have um, employed a special um, consultant to um, to explore ways in which we can improve the work in which we are doing in our schools. and. And this workshop came about as a result of um, the um, special consultant and her engagement with, with with the work. As a matter of fact, she's not just um, working in Grenada. Well, it's all the islands. The Methodist Church in the South Korean district spreads up across five islands, St. Lucia, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and Grenada. And so she, her area of focus is to work with all of the schools in that area, in, in, in the, in, in the sub-region, to see how we can improve the work of the Methodist Church in, in these schools. And so um, this particular workshop came about as a result. Yeah, of yeah. okay. So why mathematics, though? I think mathematics have always been one of the challenging areas for, for most islands in the Caribbean. In fact, um, Singapore, I think, would have had a similar experience. Um, in the 1980s, I think mathematics, like much of, many of the islands in the Caribbean, have been the students have not been performing in, in well in, in those areas. They have not been returning um, good results, we might say. Okay. And so um, what they basically did is to um, is to explore modules, ways in which they can um, improve the way in which mathematics is understood and taught in, in, 
in, in schools and this gentleman Banha, he is a national of Singapore and he himself along with many of the people in Singapore persons involved in education and mathematics in particular would have explored some of those methods and, and so on and um, from 2012 I think to 2020 I think Singapore became I think is about maybe among the five um, areas of the world where mathematics is, is excelling right yeah and so we thought that I um, mean if we could get the, this gentleman to be a part of what um, if, if we can have some what of that experience being modeled here in um, Grenada and in the Caribbean as a whole it would really make okay. a tremendous impact my mathematics teacher friend um, what school do you t teach at? I teach at Wesley College and how difficult is it for you to get the mathematics across to your students? Well, it is extremely difficult because before you even approach the concept of teaching mathematics, you have to get over that barrier in which the students come into the secondary school level with a negative approach to mathematics. They would tell you straight up from the first day of class, I don't like mathematics. So at first, you have to change that attitude and get them to appreciate and love the subject before you can even begin teaching. You're very young, but I'm going to put you on the spot because um, I, I know what you're talking about as it relates to that, that phobia people have towards students. Well, not just students, adults too. Some adults, yeah, have, true, it, yeah. they grew up with it. Where do you think that stigma came about that mathematics is hard? Well, I think it's a, a generational thing and it's something that is unique to the Caribbean because a lot of people think that mathematics is a subject that is only applicable to schools. They think that it is an academic thing where it's just a lot of calculations and a lot of uh, hard work. But they need to understand that mathematics is ingrained in society, in the way of life, in everything that we do. So even though it may appear to be difficult because they uh, normally reference the more higher level topics like algebra and those things and they really don't see how that is even applicable to life but I must say that if you really get into the nitty-gritty of things that mathematics is a wonderful subject and anybody who is involved in the mathematics field would tell you so is it is it therefore safe to I'm being the devil's advocate here is it safe to say that the way it was taught could, could have been the, the, the problem, the methodology of bringing it across? I would think so because uh, we generally would have focused on basically repeating processes step by step to teach mathematics in an old rudimentary way. But you would understand that with the involvement of technology and the world evolving, that mathematics is being taught in a lot more practical way nowadays. I mean, even if you study the Asian continent, you would see that there are approach to mathematics is not about trying to complete hard tasks or anything. They look for ways to simplify mathematics. So something that a student in Grenada or the Caribbean or even the Western world would take, let's say, 10 minutes to solve, they would solve it in seconds because they would have approaches that would just minimize the time. They would make it more efficient. So I believe that if we are able to incorporate that in our methodology and in our teaching, the approach and the likeness for maths is going to change. That is very correct because I could use my personal experience where that is concerned. I had this phobia towards maths as well, up to Form 4. And in Form 4, the teacher was changed. And I'm not going to say what school I attended or, or anything like that. The teacher was changed. And uh, uh, one of the the U.S. teachers, of the, the, um, the Peace Corps, the Peace Corps workers, he came in. I would never forget him. Here I could call his name, Mr. Williamson. He came in Form 4 and he taught maths. I went to Form 5 and I got a 1. You understand? So it, it, I think it has to do with the, the, the method, the way it is brought across. Um, and maybe due to no fault of the current crop of teachers, um, you know, problems, maybe that's what they were taught. 
Exactly. You can't give what you don't have. Exactly. And if I may interject, um, I had a similar experience where uh, a teacher was brought in at the same Form 4 level, and the way in which that teacher would have taught me, he made me feel like I could do anything as it relates to maths. And that is where my passion would have been inspired. And look at me today, I'm a maths teacher, all because of the way that he would have approached the subject in that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Ron, Rona Alexander says, yes, that phobia had me too. <laughs> yeah, um, some people panic from the time they hear mathematics. And I was looking at a video on TikTok the other day, and the guy was saying, some of these things are tantamount to child abuse because why are you telling me you're coming to teach me mathematics and you're writing on the chalkboard y plus y um what, what is that for me y mx plus c y is equal to mx, mx plus, plus c. yeah what, um that, that's what the what um equation of a straight line yeah right y equals to mx plus c and you say well where's the number you're telling me <laughs> mathematics that is child abuse how is that applicable to my two days life my everyday life how how can mathematics can you know maybe this is a good platform to start the conversation how we know that in mathematics there are basically four four procedures add well basically two addition and subtraction right because division and multiplication is continuous right. you know so um how do we get people to identify how mathematics is applicable to everyday living well, I think that conversation starts in the classroom because while you're teaching the subject, it is important to bring in real life experiences while you teach. So you're teaching a child a particular topic. Show them how this is applicable to real life. Say that the baker is create, is making a cake and he has to use X amount of or this particular amount of sugar or flour. That is measurement right there. You can even incorporate the topic of ratios. So if this students are able to gain an understanding that, hey, I do mathematics every day with simple tasks, I think that they would love that. Yeah. And but but where, where should that start be started? Should it be started in the real, you know, rudimental stages so that they grow with it, that appreciation? I, I agree. It, it should start at the pre-primary level all the way up because if the students at that level, preschool, where they are in their formative stage and they are able to absorb information better or more information, if they develop that appreciation at that level, they're going to grow with it. Grow with it. Some Someone wants to join in on the conversation. Good morning, caller. Well, not just someone. Let's T have a Tony, good morning. From well, your direction. Eh? Well, I mean, Tony, come on. Tony. Anyway, okay, okay, okay. I'm in a merciful mood this morning. Listen, actually, cutting right to it, I find this absolutely fascinating. Okay? No. There are different types of intelligence, aren't there? There's musical intelligence, there's artistic intelligence, there's scientific intelligence, there's this kind, of, there's that kind, there's the other kind. Huh? And uh, for example, English language, I did not to keep on and on and on. I did English, CXE, I got an A. Just to prove myself and out of the laws of English language, I did it at the CXE level. CXE was on its way out the door, but I did it, and I got a grade one. Mathematics, I had to do not one, not two. I had to do mathematics four times. Even my mother said to me, T. You have given it your best shot. Give up. Wow. Well, that just ignited something in me. And so, praise Christ Jesus. At time number four, I got it. You know? Here's my question to your guests. Is it maybe a good idea to have a better assessment of certain intelligences that different students are prone to 
and you focus on those things. Not that you're cutting them out of math, so that you're saying, oh, that's not a scientifically intelligent student. That's not a musically intelligent student. So keep him away from math, keep him away from this, keep him away from that. But maybe after a certain level, maybe up to Form 4 in secondary school, you see the intelligence, you've identified it at a very early level at the secondary school level. And so you concentrate more with each of those students on what has been identified as their strength. Do you think that that is possible? What would it take? Or is it an absolutely ridiculous idea? Thank you, Tony. Sending it out to you. Have a good one. Okay. All right. If I may jump in, I'm happy that the caller would have asked that question because he's, he's absolutely right. We understand that uh, students learn differently. There are multiple intelligences because you cannot judge. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is by Einstein. You cannot judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree. All right? <laughs> I like that, so, too. Yeah. So we must understand that, yes, our students learn differently. And that is why modern teaching practices would tell you that you need to cater for those through differentiated teaching. And we, at the secondary level, we do that. We try to meet each student based on their competence, their ability to learn, as well as their style of learning. However, I would like to point some fingers now because although we do that at the school level, we still have to prepare the students for a rudimentary exam in the sense that CXE has not really evolved over the years. The CSEC examination is a paper-based examination that tests only the student's cognitive ability and the ability to reproduce particular information. But if they were to diversify, because there are certain students, they can't really write per se, but if you were to ask them, they would be able to articulate it very efficiently. So if the organization that is responsible for governing education in the region is able to change the methods and develop exams that would be able to cater for those students, I think we would be heading in the right direction. Okay. Because we're behind on that. The first world countries are already doing it. Places like America and the Asian continent are light years ahead of us in that regard. Okay. Let's come back to the, the, the workshop now. So what do we intend to get from that workshop? Teachers who are attending the workshop, what exactly would the, that um, Ban, what's his name? Ban? Yip Banha. Banha. Yip Banha. Yeah, what, what is he going to do? Is he going to come and divulge some new methodologies in executing mathematics, teaching of mathematics? What is he going to do? Yes, um, the, well, the, the mathematics um, workshop has two components, basically. The, the, on day one, he would explore different pedagogical approaches to teaching, to, to math, to the way that math can be applied. Um, on the second day, what he will be doing is that he will be gathering with his class at Wesley College, and um, he will be teaching that class, exploring some of the very mod models that he would have taught the day before. And teachers would be given the opportunity to to observe him and to interact in a Q&A session. Now, in, in, I would think that in, in order for him to get a full appreciation as to what to deliver, is he going to have a sort of on the study of Grenada's level and performance in mathematics or is just going to generalize? Previous to his coming here, he would have asked for those that okay. kind of information, right. so okay. uh, yeah, so he can be aware of how to to gauge uh, what he's teaching. And if I, if I may okay. interject as well, um, he we, we have been working along with him. We, he has been consulting with us, asking us for certain background information. And I must say that sometime last year, mm -hmm. I had the privilege of attending a webinar mm -hmm. that was hosted by Dr. Banha, and I'm telling you, Guru 
is the word to describe this fella. And when you say we, who who are, who are the we? He, the math the math teachers at Wesley College. Okay. Because I don't know if you know, Wesley College is a Methodist school, right. so we're working closely with the Methodist Church on this, and that is why we were selected as the pilot school for to host Dr. Banha. So the second workshop and uh, uh, the news it says at the, the Queens Park Stadium, the National Stadium. Where is it at the stadium or is it at Wesley College? It's at the College? stadium. Okay. A, so it has two components. In the morning, they would gather at Wesley College okay. with, with the class, and then they, because of the capacity to host everybody, they would have to move to the stadium so that they in one of the conference rooms so that the teachers can engage with Mr. Van. You seem, youngster, you seem to be a very proficient mathematics teacher. What level have you attained in, 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 in mathematics? Well, Not I. Not at CXC, I mean, university level? No, I, I, I did keep level, so I, I did keep level units one and two mathematics I'm also currently um, pursuing a degree a bachelor's degree in that field okay and the reason for me asking that I want to get your honest opinion in your evaluation of the especially the mathematics component of our curriculum where do you think we are feeling as as uh, from um, administrative perspective I think one of the things that we as math teachers require is the resources all right and at a lot of a lot of times we don't have that physical resources to incorporate a lot of the ideas that we have towards teaching the subject i mean i spoke about uh relating it to real life but we must also understand there are visual learners and it is important to bring in manipulatives into the lesson so students must be able to feel they must be able to touch and a lot of times, based on our limited resources, we're unable to do that. I mean, we try to incorporate technology, but uh, we still are stuck in that old way where we just have to write on the board and explain. And I think that if the uh, powers that be are able to give us those resources, we'll be heading in the right direction. Okay. We're out of time, so I just want to... Um give my good friend the opportunity once again to you know say um invite the you know teachers usually look for reasons not to be in the classroom <laughs> um oh did i say that yes i did sorry <laughs> uh, so invite a i think i just want to um thank first of all the ministry of education for um collaborating with us agreeing to collaborate with us in this very um worthwhile venture and we really hope that the teachers who would be exposed to this um, to these workshops would really benefit and that Grenada as a whole we would start seeing results in the way that um, um, the Grenadian children um, benefit from something like this Thank you. yes well I think that I want to send out that invitation again because having been uh, involved in that webinar with Dr. Banha, I'm telling you, based on his background, he's not only a math guru, but he is specialized in teacher education, right? So he teaches how to teach mathematics and his principles are revolutionary. So if you really want to make an impact in the math field, please come out and be a part of that workshop. How old so is this guru? Is he a youngster like you? <laughs> Not as young as me. <laughs> I, I think in order to attain that level of guru, uh, you have to be there for some time. <laughs> because I know there are some crazy people in these in this parts yeah, of the world, the little, little true. children. <laughs> but, but folks, on a serious note, uh, um, in my opinion, um, you know, mathematics teachers, I urge you to, you know, go on out and be a part of that workshop. Um we are really struggling. I, I know for a fact, um, over the years, the Ministry of Education have made, you know, great strides in getting to understand why we are not doing as we should be doing in mathematics. But this is an opportunity to be exposed to a different methodologies and some things that you, you might not have thought of. Not that you don't have it in you, but maybe you never thought that could be used to disseminate the, uh, the mathematics information that you want to. So I urge us to be there. Um, it's two days uh, and it will prove very fruitful, uh, fruitful in the not too distant future. I'd like to take the opportunity also to thank the Methodist Church for seeing the need for such um, an innovation and bringing it to the fore to get this gentleman here. Um, 
That's the reason why I ask if he's a practicing Methodist. Okay. Because if he's a practicing Methodist, then he might say, okay, that's along my faith, so I wouldn't charge. So, But to get these guys and them to move from place to place is usually very costly. costly. And coming from Singapore again is not is not somewhere near. The, the airfare alone would be, yeah. would be a figure. But, um, yeah, thanks yeah. on behalf of the people. for And we look forward to more initiatives of that nature from your, uh, your faith-based institution. Thank you so much. Folks, we've got to wrap it up because we've got to join the BBC. I've been talking to representatives from the uh, the Methodist Faith in Grenada as they have this workshop, two-day workshop coming up with the mathematics guru from Singapore. That's it for the program. Those of you who participated, thank you very much. Even if it's by listening, thank you for being a part of the program. See you on the flip side of 8 o'clock. Bye-bye. Thank you.